So guys, here we are in our fourth week of quarantine and I want to do a big shout out to all the nurses and all the frontline workers who are doing an amazing job across the whole of the UK. So a big thank you and thumbs up to them. We've put together a film to do with staining for the staircase because a lot of you have been asking what's going on with the staircase videos, where are we at? So we've got about another three more to come. So we thought we'd do the staining first and show you the staining process of the risers and the treads. Hey guys. It's Tony from Any &E Construction. You're watching Build with A&E, &E, and today I'm going to show you how to do a staining on a finished veneered product or a solid oak tread. They're all the same principle. You have to make sure you sand it really, really well. Now, the way you sand with any wood product, you always make sure you sand with the grain like this. You never sand across the grain because you'll end up leaving loads of little marks or scratches across the grain. So always make sure you sand with the grain like this. Make sure you get all your last little imperfections off and out of the way with a very fine paper. I'm finishing off with 240. So we use 180 uh, paper and we also then use 120. We start at uh, 100 on a solid piece of timber, but because this is a veneer, this veneer is really thin, so you have to be a bit careful. It's only like 0.6 millimeters thick on this. So we would start with a grit of about 120 mil on this, give it a light sand with a palm sander. Once we've done that, we would then finish it off then with a block on a 180, and then we then drop down to 240. So we get a really nice finish. And we always make sure we go with the grain, okay? So it's really important that you go with the grain, not across the grain to get scratches, okay? Once you've done that, you then get yourself a tack cloth. Now these tack cloths, that's what I use, live on tack cloth, they're really, really good. You see this one's actually got loads and loads of dust in there already, but you'll be amazed how you can still keep on using that because it's still got a load of tack to it. And you can see there's residues of dust that's left after sanding, so we just give it a nice, wipe off like this, turn it over, wipe it back, turn it over again, wipe it back, and like this. And you just check across, and there's a light up there that I use, I'm going to just check across it like this, there's no dust on there, I'm happy with the way that's done. I have multiple tins in here, all mixed together, so I've got three or four tins in here, what I think I need. I always give it a stir, every time I stay, I always stir this, I don't leave it, because then I'm always happy that I know I'm mixing everything together really well. Now the other thing I do do is I use a sponge. Now you can see that sponge, loads and loads of dye in there. So what I do is I squeeze half of that dye out of the sponge. And once I've done that, I'm happy it's not dripping everywhere. Now you can see with the sponge, it literally I can squeeze the sponge to get a little bit more die out but uh, swirl it around keep it really well covered and the great thing about the sponge it goes on a lot quicker but then also you can cover the area so much quicker can't you literally I mean how quick am I doing this I mean if this was the brush I'd only be like on a quarter of the way through and I really like get it going really work it in make sure I've covered all of those areas really get it there look at that Look at that, that's great. Get that really worked in. Yeah, there we go. You can buy sponge brushes uh, that which they sell, but they're really expensive. So you might as well just go and to and get yourself a, a really closed cell sponge, or not so much where the sponge is quite tightly knitted. A car sponge or sponge that you used to clean with, they are actually quite good as well. But if you buy a big car sprints, they're only like 50, 60p, you cut them all up and last you for quite a long time. Okay, there we go, look at that. Now once you see, look, you can see all the swirling around, I'm doing them really. And then what you can do is then run all the way down, like this. Now you can probably see there's loads of street marks in this at the moment, so the next thing I do, once I've done that process, get my ball of cloth. And this is made of multi rags and I keep using this because it's just a great, I don't used to use one cloth, I like about eight or nine cloths together and just keep swapping around and keep churning them. But what I'll do is I'll literally start from this side here and I'll literally wipe all the way through like this in one action, okay? And the same here, come back, 
and then also the same again, like that, and then come back. Now it's really important, sometimes when you put the cloth on like this, you can actually, look, you see the marking here? So it's really important that when you do this, once you've done the first couple of wipes, make sure then you spin your cloth. So, get another little dry bit. Now I'm just gonna, not over press it, but I'm just gonna make sure I get those last little imperfections out because I don't want them to just gently, just gently like that. I'm doing really gently now, hardly touching, just literally stroking it. So there we go, look. So now you can see there's no residue air. Air is nothing through here, no residue air is through here. So it's a lovely consistent layer. And that's really important because when you then get it ready to then put your second coat on, you know you've got a really good finished product. The next process on this is that I would, once this is dry after two to three hours, I would then denib it because you can imagine when we stain something, because it's water-based, it lifts all of the hairs in the timber. So what we then do is let it dry, denib it, and then what happens, I'll show you what I use to denib, and then I then restain it, and then I'll let that dry again, and I'll denib it again. And you'll see that process all the way through. Okay guys? So guys, as I promised earlier, this is the solid oak tread that we're staining at the moment. We've put the first coat of stain on. Obviously here at the moment, we've got to put another coat of stain on now. At the moment, you can feel all the hairs all lifted on this. So the first thing I'll do is I'll get myself some uh, silicon carbide paper. Uh, we use a uh, Myra, or Merca as they call it. I call it Myra, but it's Merca really. The, and all I do is just literally nicely, lightly rub across the tread like this, down the length of the grain like this, nice up and down, nice even motion. Not over sanding it either, you know, so in other words, I'm not putting too much pressure on, but I'm just getting rid of those little hairs that are on there. So, put my glasses on. Makes it a little bit easier for me to see. So just put my hand, feel it there, it's a little bit just there. And that's and it looks feels a lot better now. You do that from nice and gentle. Yeah, that feels a lot better than it did a minute ago. I'll now get my tack cloth. But what I do is I like to go across the grain with the tackle off like this because if there's any other bits, sometimes flex them up like this. Not too much pressure either. And then I go up and down like this. There we go, like that. And then I'll run along the grain, the nose in. Okay, I'll just give it a last check off. Well, that's a lot better than it was. That's now ready for the second coat of stain. Okay guys, now if you notice I'll put face with face here like this. So here we go again. A few more hairs on this one. You can actually see there's a lot more hairs on this one. So same again, set it up, get my flower paper. There we go, some 320, that's what I use. Carter Flex, really great product. I call it flower paper. That's what I used to get called when I was an apprentice. The guys in the finishing shop, they used to call it flower paper. It's actually a silicon carbide bonding onto a resin back. Nice and lightly, gently rub with the grain, not across the grain. Just down the nosing as well. This is 320 grit, this is. I also do a 400, I've got a 400, but I'm using the 320. I think it's a little bit better on the oak. That looks really good. That's took all those fine hairs off. Tack cloth again. Go across grain. Now, as I've done that, you can see it just lifting those last little bits out of. That's why I like going across the grain like that. It just gets those last little bits away. It really does lift up quite nicely, actually. 
is those last bits lifted out of the grain, which is what I'm trying to do. There we go. That's really nice. So the next coat will put stain on this again and then do the same process again because this is only as its first coat of stain. So second coat of stain, you'll get a lot less hairs than before. And then when we coat the oil on top, we'll then do it again. Back to back on that one. Now, ready for the second coat of stain. So, same principle again. Stirred my stain with a stick earlier. So, as I said before, just squeeze half the juice out. There we go. Literally, as you can see, putting the next layer of stain on. And what I do, I love using the sponge, not a brush. And literally wipe it all on again. Taking them nicely now. A lot less hair is lifting now. You get a cloth I've been using earlier, and all I'm doing is going to wipe it through again. Wipe it through, wiping it. The reason I like to prep all my treads before I fit them all is because in case anything moves or twists, then if you can imagine the housing of the string comes along this edge here, and if it does shrink or move, at least then it's got stain underneath. Uh, just gives it a better finish, I think. And then there's a, a finishing cloth. Just get any residue off. Absolutely beautiful. There we go. Now it's lifted the hairs a little bit, I can see, but hardly anything. Has a nice consistency all the way through, no extra additional rag marks on that. I'll let that dry now, take that into the other room, which is a lot warmer than this room. But you can see it has a lovely consistency, it's what I'm after. That's now going to be de nibbed after it's dried in the next two to three hours. I can then put the first coat of oil on, which I'll show you. Okay, guys. Now, I do apologize, halfway through we lost a load of footage to do with the oil application of the actual uh, risers and staircase treads. What you'll need is a small microfiber roller. You apply the oil, uh, the first coat of oil by doing that. You then take off the excess of the oil with a lint-free cloth. You let it dry then for about 10 hours. You then denib it with the flower paper again, and then you then tack cloth it, then give it another application of oil. Now we've got all the treads with their first coat of oil on, so they've all had a really good day to dry. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give them a second coat of oil, which will be ready then for the staircase to be knocked up. So you can see they've come out really well, the oil's really soaked in really nicely here. Really, really soaked in nicely there, really pleased with that. So here we are guys, me and my cat Hugo. He's the boss in the house. Well, besides the wife, obviously. If you like the video, hit the like button, hit the notification button, hit the subscribe button, and also check out our Instagram, Facebook accounts as well. Be safe, look after yourself, take care.